So we've discussed uh, the human person as body, soul, and spirit. We've discussed stress. Uh, we've discussed the problems of fear and how fear creates distress. And the question then becomes, how do we come to a place where we are experiencing more eustress, more positive stress, through our faith in God? Uh, because it seems like that's a very difficult thing to do, is live perfectly in um, reference, constant mindfulness of God's presence. Uh, this is a, um, uh, if you, you want to find out how far you are from it, you know, sit down in a quiet place, put in some earplugs, and just see what your head does, you know, after 20 minutes of sitting there. Um, our minds are full of chatter. Our bodies are very often saying, I'm hungry, or I'm sore, or I'm this, I'm that, and move me, don't move me, different position. We itch, uh, we twitch, and we discover that we don't have a lot of peace. And this is, again, that, that scattered sensation. We flip from thought to thought to thought to thought. Uh, the, uh, the fathers of the church call those logis me. They're these little words. Logos is word. It's, it's these little things that just pop in and out and in and out. And they're constantly tormenting us. And then the, the body is saying, I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm, you know, take me for a walk, don't take me for a walk. And um, so our, our beings are very scattered. Um, so the church uh, teaches us that um, there are um, things that we can do to discipline our bodies and discipline our minds um, in order to then be at peace, to listen for our, our spiritual natures and to begin to listen for God. If we're caught in the midst of this turmoil of the body and the soul, we'll never really hear anything because it's just plain old too noisy in there. Um, our heads are, 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 are you know, chattering and our bodies are throwing at us all these uh, random sensations. And what we've learned throughout the centuries, uh, and this is even seen outside of Christianity and other disciplines, for example, uh, in, in uh, yoga or in uh, uh, Buddhism or whatnot, these these various disciplines which the um, the church puts into place to um, bring about quietness, a a sense of peace, a sense of tranquility, a sense of silence, which ultimately comes from our our connection to God. But we all have that connection to some degree. Um, it's a matter of, of building upon it. And it begins through an act of repentance. It's where we say, I'm going to change. Well, what does, what does that mean to, uh, that we're going to change, that we're going to repent? Because repent is literally, it's, it's a turning around, it's, it's a turning a new leaf, let's say. Well, the first thing is we need to reign in our body. We don't just live according to our, our uh, physical drives, let's say. Um, be those our drives for um, um, sexual gratification, for food, um, for uh, comfortable clothing. And, and so what uh, we begin to do is we, we start off with uh, disciplining our body. And in the church, uh, one of the, the big tools for that are the fasts, where we abstain from uh, certain foods. Um, on occasion, we may even abstain entirely from food um, for, for brief periods. But there's always this idea of abstaining um, to, to teach the body who's boss. <laughs> it's to not be uh, simply uh, knocked about by the whims of your, of, of your flesh. The, the next uh, stage is um, more we consider between uh, mental uh, disciplines. And these are disciplines, for example, of prayer, of um, uh, trying to learn how to focus our minds and our thoughts on God uh, for specific times. Uh, reading the Psalms, a prayer discipline, um, these are all in, uh, very, uh, very important. And, and, you know, some people say, well, you know, if you don't pray ext uh, extemporaneously and, you know, pray with the, the depths of your heart, um, you know, it's not real prayer. Um, that's baloney. Uh, <laughs> Real prayer comes when we are doing something um, that uh, is good for us, um, even when we don't want to. 
because it shows our commitment to God. It reveals that we are really um, serious about him, that we're not doing it just um, because it makes us feel good, that we're actually trying to move along in our spiritual development. So sometimes the most helpful times of prayer are the ones where we don't feel anything at all. We don't get a, a warm, fuzzy sensation. Uh, we have to struggle. Now, in that struggle, we then uh, will go through the process of, of cleansing ourselves, both in terms of our bodies. We, we learn to take care of our bodies differently. Um, there's, uh, you may have to uh, take up a physical exercise if you're not used to it in order to kind of build up your ability to, to sit or stand for long periods of time in prayer. Um, in terms of our, um, our mental activities, we begin to, in, in the fast, abstain from certain entertainment activities uh, and, and kind of uh, build up our, our focus. And in doing so, we run across those old enemies of, of resentment and anger towards others and then our sense of indebtedness. And we need to resolve those things again through um, acts of repentance where we ask for um, uh, God's help. And by eliminating the turmoil of the soul that comes through uh, guilt and resentment, um, we then come, become more peaceful. And by lowering the turmoil of our souls, we are not aggravating our bodies so much with higher levels of stress that the body needs to come off of. And so that we begin to have a much more um, balanced and quieter experience. And this allows everything to kind of come together. And whereas before we were kind of scattered in our awareness, our awareness becomes much more um, uh, focused and is able to kind of see the reality of things rather than the turmoil of the imagination. And so those things come together um, to form uh, that, uh, that aspect of uh, spiritual development, which is, is inner peace. So um, that's just a brief uh, introduction to that topic, and um, I hope you found this helpful.